Hi, everybody. Welcome to Star Citizen Live Game Dev, The Art of Spaceships, or The Art of Ships. I can't remember what we called it now. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee, broadcasting uh, from Casa Lando here in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Uh, we are indeed still in the work from home era. I uh, hope you guys are staying safe. I uh, hope you guys are, 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 I just can't say that enough. I hope you guys are staying safe uh, and, and clear out there in the real world. Uh, joining us on the show this week is uh, no stranger to Star Citizen Live, but it is his first time flying solo. Uh, I'd like to, like to introduce uh, art director, Mr. Paul Jones. Paul, how you doing, man? Good, good. It, you're right. It is the first time flying solo. It, it, it is. What, well, what happened? Well, I mean, you're not you're not totally solo. You're here with me. That you're is true. It's kind of uh, like when um, you uh, go paraglide and you've got the dude behind you, <laughs> <laughs> or am, in front. Am, I was going to say, am I the dude behind you, or am I the dude? In <laughs> I don't front think it really matters. <laughs> well, okay. Well, well, one is the one is the paraglider instructor, and one is the paraglider person. I like. I, I maybe think, maybe I should do the the talking. Yeah, I, you should I don't do know. the you should do the art. We we we, we didn't we did we didn't practice our analogies before the start of the show. No, we didn't. Uh, now, Paul, uh, just because every show is somebody's first show, uh, let's take a few minutes. Uh, tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. Um, <laughs> this this is the one that always catches me out. I know. Uh, so uh, basically, I'm the art one of the art directors at uh, Cloud Imperium Games. Um, and currently I look after uh, spaceship concepts. So I work with a small team, internal and external. Um, we do a lot of the cool stuff, uh, which then you guys buy and help fund this fabulous project. Um, and then also uh, look after FPS weapons, ship weapons, and ship components at the moment. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned that small team uh, concept artist. We've we've had Sarah Marsden, uh, or not, she's Sarah McCullough. <laughs> yeah, many, McCulloch. Yeah. There there is a Sarah Marsden. She's 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 she's, she's another member of another team. A Sarah McCullough on the team. Uh, we've had uh, Jim Martin uh, on the show on the show before. Um, uh, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of other concept ar- ship concept artists we've we've, we've had in the show. Um, uh, fo- folks, other names folks might know: Gavin Rothery, uh, stuff like that. Um, uh, it's it's a very talented team that that you're the uh, you're, you're you're the you're the the focal point for the head of the the trying. What what what's the word I'm looking for here? Paul? Well, I'm like the focus. They're like a bunch of wild horses, and I kind of <laughs> bring them in and and sort of take take the direction from Chris. Uh, and also, you know, it's it's you know we still have quite a lot of leeway in terms of what we get to do, um, and we try and basically hit all the notes that Star Citizen needs to. You know, there's a lot of functionality now in the ships. Like it is, it's it was a lot easier in those early days, I would say, because it was, you know, um, there was you know there was functionality, but it was like oh let's you know let's just. Throwing a door, throwing a table, yeah, yeah, it looks cool. We didn't quite Whereas, have the metrics. Yeah. yeah, now everything has to hit metrics, and especially uh, we are trying to sort of improve the process. Well, it's a continual thing, but yeah. uh, you know, when we deliver and hand off the concept, it's it's as good as it can be within the time frame. This, it's never perfect, and I think the artists are always like, "God damn it, why is it, why isn't this right?" And I'm just like. It's there's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> uh, do you remember what the first ship you did for Star Citizen was? Yeah, it was um, it was the Argo MPUV. Really? Yeah, yeah. That was done by Stu Jennett right at the start. Okay, then... uh, but my my disconnect is that was done much earlier than it was introduced to the, yes. the, the backer yeah, the backer yeah. community. Yes, so so. Was... It yeah, was part of Squadron I'm, at the time. Yes, yeah, so you did it and back then, in part of Squadron. And then it was the Gladiator, uh, the Gladius. The Gladius. So, based, there we so go. that was with Rothery. So that's the first time I worked with Gav. Yeah. And yeah. there was a little bit of help from Andrew Lay. Remember Andy Lay? Yeah. I never got um, to talk to him very much, but but yeah, you you you've so you've been you've been shepherding the look and feel of our ship concepts since. 
uh, as far as what pe- people would be aware of, the Gladius is what I'm looking for, you know, since, since the Gladius was first introduced, because they didn't see the MPUV until much later, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Uh, but but the, the Gladius, so you, you've, you've been with the project for a, a, a while now, almost, almost since the beginning. Yeah, um, over six years now, so um, there's a f- few tours of duty in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would, would, would you be surprised to know that that's, that's over 100, that, that's almost 100 ships? Yeah, but I don't think I don't think I've worked on all of them. Some of them have slipped through. Some of them have been with, uh, like there was a time. I mean, you, you know, it's it's a big learning process. This, and uh, I didn't really know a lot about spaceships when I first started. Funnily enough, you think you do, and then you realise you don't know anything. Um, and so there's been a big learning curve. Um, and so I've just been picking up from lots of people. But there were some ships that were obviously done by Chris and concept artists that he worked with. Um, There were a few by Nate uh, that he worked on and with concept artists that he worked on. Because at the time, uh, I think there were too many at one point uh, for for just me to handle because I had Squadron as well. So we were splitting. Just for for clarity, when you say Chris, uh, you're referring to Chris Olivier. Olivier, right? No, Chris. Well, I, I guess no. I was I, Chris Roberts. So I guess oh. I was, you know, because there was a lot of feedback that I would see from Chris from CR on the shotgun, you know. So I guess I'm not quite sure what the process was back then. I wasn't really privy to their sort of their working methodology. Gotcha. All right. Well, what we're doing today is one is. In, we've covered various points of the ship concept process. We, with, we've had Sarah, uh, Sarah on the show, uh, starting us off with thumbnails and taking us through a bit of the process. Uh, we're, we're now skipping to the end of that process and the creation of a promo or key art. So um, you're, 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 you're generally responsible for, for that aspect of it uh, while your individual artist, well, you'll guide the individual artist on making the ships. When it comes time to put them in situ and show show how they would work in the universe. Um, uh, you tend to be a little more hands-on with that. If, 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 is that a, 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 an actor? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I mean, I try and... My sort of methodology is that I try, you know, I try and give the sort of concept artists as much leeway to put themselves into the ship, basically. So I don't want to be micromanaging, um, but I will if it comes, you know, if things aren't going right, then I then I will dig in and and you know we've done interviews recently where, um, you know, and definitely in the last two years um, there's been ships where I've just started to do a lot more hands on in those early stages as well. But yeah, generally the concept artist is still finishing off the vehicle or the ship, and so I jump ahead, often do. Um, paint schemes and that good stuff and then start sort of working with will and the marketing team and turbulent okay how do we want to you know it's a lot more formalized these days so it's okay what are the beats that we're trying to hit what is what does the website want what does the brochure want what's yeah like <laughs> the, those simple days are gone <laughs> yes well that is what happens as, as time goes on and and the company gets bigger. It's, it's not my. This isn't my. This wasn't my first startup back in the day. Well, I'm sure it wasn't yours either. This is what happens. Is this things grow and 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 all the procedures and and, and stuff come uh, are developed over time. Uh, so for today's show, we're gonna sh- we're showing a little bit about how we do those uh, those key arts, those promo arts. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you uh, do the screen share. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got 50 minutes left in the show. We filled the first 10 with 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 rabble. Uh, so we'll let you screen, uh, share your screen. And How many minutes have we got? 50. 50. Okay. I thought you said 15. I was like, no, you're, not, you're not that oh. easy. You're not that easy. <laughs> then I was going to really start sweating it then. Um, okay. So let's try and get this worked out. And of course, if anybody has any questions for Paul uh, throughout the show, you can feel free to put them into chat. Uh, you can preface your question with the word question. Uh, surrounded by brackets uh, that'll help me pick it up from the rest of the conversation uh, remember that Paul is the art dire- is the art director so questions should be related to art if you're wondering how this ship will do X or Y or, or will, will this be able to do this or whatever uh, those aren't the type of questions uh, that would be appropriate for our art director today 
That is correct. We won't be talking about loadouts. We won't be talking about uh, five ships that I've worked on recently um, that people haven't seen or know about. We won't be talking about any of that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, so let's throw out some caveats first before um, people start getting all upset. Um, so this is basically... Um, uh, so basically, at the start of the week, Jared had said, "Hey, it came with, came with, with this idea of let's uh, let's show the art of uh, making a promo image." Um, and at the time, I was like, "Cool, yeah, love to. Let's do this." And it seemed like a no-brainer. And then the more I dug into it, it just got harder and harder. So <laughs> this week, along with the PC that died on me, um, there's been lots of things that have gone wrong. So normally. Uh, normally with a promo image, say something like this, um, you it would take uh, it takes between three and five days uh, for something like this. This is this is you know we're taking the models um, they've been built by the concept artist and then we're sort of working out either an action scenario or um, some kind of um, studio setup. Um, and so for me, this is the best part. Um, so like I said, it normally takes three days, two to three days. So to try and squeeze this into 45 minutes has been quite, quite a job. So it'll either go one of two ways. It'll either go really well or it'll, it'll just burn in flames horribly. And, and then you guys will see some of the difficulties we have, um, with making this stuff, but I've attempted to, uh, try and make this a little, a little smoother. So enough preamble. Um, you know, this is this is kind of how I approach stuff. Um, there's, there's probably better ways, um, but this is how I sort of generally deal with things. So let's turn that off. So it normally starts with basically a, a blank screen, and um, I'll, you know, I'll chat to the artist. I'll give them a little bit of direction. So on this one, we're going to be dealing with the Aries. Um, and um you know we've done some cool shots previously with that so uh, we're going to continue just doing uh, a few more ideas so this represents the, so see this jared see this yep do you, do you like that that's my city that represents my city um and so this is a that's my horizon and then those are my those are my ships. And so this is what the poor concept artists will have to deal with initially. And actually, I, you know, it, it's not a hardship to them. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, uh, and it's no problem. And so it's just like, okay, well, here's the here's the caterpillar or here's the idris. Here's some ships. They've, you know, they've flown in. Let's, just, let's, let's get my pen going. Is that your horizon line? Yep. That's the top. Uh, I do want to offer uh, for folks like, is the Aries coming? Whatever. No, we, we specifically chose the Aries because this is a uh, this is work that is done during the concept phase. And so we specifically chose a ship that was still in concept phase uh, to use this to use for our demonstration. So the Aries is not in active development right now. It's not being built. So it's not coming in three nine or four zero. Uh, we specifically chose it because it's a concept ship and it's still in concept phase. Yes, and we we have the assets, and so um, it's it's a little simpler just to make it's to make an image basically. It's kind of just showing you guys behind a peek behind the curtain about how this stuff is made. So um, this this is basically how we start off. Super simple. There's you know there's no awards for for art here. It's just communicating what's going on, and this may change. You know, the ship may rotate 180, um, but it's just you know it's getting a vibe. And so, um, you know, we don't have it. Well, we have quite a few cities in Star Citizen, but I didn't have access. And for some reason, I decided to make my own <laughs> generic one. I'm not quite sure why. I just thought it'd be good fun. Um, and so and so I did. So you can, you can see all these little buildings here. This originally was going to be roads. And then uh, I turned it into waterways. It's kind of like, whoop, it's kind of like a sort of v Venice. It's not massively sci-fi. In fact, it's very it's very generic as cities go. Um, 
but you kind of get you kind of get an idea. And just so you fired up 3D Max, and you generated yourself uh, what looks to be a, a city shaped skyline. Yes. Yep. A little bit of a harbor here going on. Super rough. Um, Max, because uh, of the scale of this thing, Max sometimes sort of uh, craps out and has shading issues. So uh, you'll just have to bear with that. But um, you can see here, let's, let's just open this up. What do we got there? Is that the roofs? Let's go to orthographic. Perspective also causes problems. Okay, let's go to this. Let's get the side of buildings. I've detached all the tops, but you can kind of see here. We can go back in time uh, with the stack. Basically, it's called the stack, which is like a you put all these modifiers on your geometry, and so you can kind of see basically where it started off. So it was a super simple shape. Built some roads. Made uh, did a couple of boolean operations to cut in and there's a cool little operation which then uh, requadrifies -quadr -re creates quads in your mesh um, and then from that you can then use a plugin called greeble <laughs> and um, basically you can just go ahead and make your buildings and also you know you can do the tops of the building so you can see here there's like the roof furniture now this is just very much block out again there's no awards for this it's 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 just giving an impression of a city this is you know this is something we might do initially block mm -hmm. out a city and then we're like you know, if it's the concept artist doing it, they'd be like, hey, what do you think? Like, is this is this what you're thinking? You know, they haven't invested too much time. Right. This is just a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, and, it's, uh, and it's a couple of hours created by a concept artist. It's not necessarily representative of any particular location in the game. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's evocative. Yes, basically. So it could be, yeah, it could be anywhere. Um, and often, you know, sometimes we'll just make stuff up for, you know, for the promo art and then ask narrative to sort of, sort of backfill, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure such, appreciate. sometimes we have a good idea and then, then we're like, Hey, can you, um, can you like sort of give us something that will sort of help support this so we can keep this visual. Um, and you can see here, there's, there's some, there's some horrors, um, some of the buildings are super thin and stuff like that, but you know, it's it's a background piece, and exactly. uh, you know we won't worry about it too much. I even built some boats. <laughs> Look at that. Good job, Paul. Do you like that? That's pretty sweet, huh? Um, and so from this point, um, oh, so there's a there's a guy on uh, YouTube, of course. There's a there's a video for everything, right? Um, and so I just followed his tutorial on how to build cities. And um, of course, I can't remember his name because I've got a 64 kilobit memory. Um, but it's great. I mean, it's great for sort of just doing this sort of stuff. I'm going to call you Commodore for the rest of the show now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so from here, um, it's basically... Uh, you know, you don't want to go too far. You know, I've sort of I've, I've applied a couple of textures um, to this. Let's just uh, change view mode. Are they on there? You know, really badly mapped. Like, like you can see windows being cut off. Um, and then also you've got your sort of high tech section with a couple of office windows thrown on there. So, you know, just super basic, super basic, but it gives you the impression. So from there, we'll basically um, export into a program called Keyshot. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is kind of getting dry. It's kind of, be nice if I had a beer assistant. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. someone who would just turn up and hand me a beer. It is Friday afternoon after all. Say, hang on, I'll be right there. 
<laughs> so, um, all right, where are we up to? So basically, then we go into Keyshot. I mean, everybody uses different kind of programs for the, how they achieve their visuals. Some of our team use a program called Blender. Um, it's got a real time engine in it called Eevee. It, you know, it, uh, it's, it's doing some really cool stuff. Um, just my process has been Max to Keyshot. And we've used basically me and Sarah and Gavra three. We've we've used that for pretty much the whole of the time. Mm. Um, I kind of I've had a I've had a couple of niggles with with setting this project up. It's not as uh, it's not as great as I would have liked, but I guess let's not get hung up on that. Um, yes, you are showcasing in less than an hour, so. Yes. You know, work that normally takes three to five days for a single image, you're doing, you're showcasing in less than an hour. So important to keep that perspective. So he, he let's, let's come out of there. Let's just zoom back in. Oops. So you can see you've got some basic materials applied that have transferred over. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, look at that. Look. My beard just appeared. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the internet. Beautiful. Thank you, Seb. Mm. Okay. Um, so this, this is, is your basic. A, this is going to be a very interesting work from home era for <laughs> for, for our programs. So this is this is the key shot um, program. If you, you have all, you basically I like it because it's you know it's got a lot of uh, preset materials. It's a you know, it's a physically based rendering um, system. So um, all the materials generally work correctly, uh, sort of works with HDRI, high dynamic range images. Mm -hmm. So you get that nice sort of bloom when the intensity increases. Um, and it gives us a lot of freedom um, to sort of create our visuals. And you can see here, yeah, the water, it's pretty generic, the buildings, you know, it's just giving that, it's giving that overall impression. And if you, you know, if you actually to look at, uh, if I was to show you a lot of the promo images right at the start, like at this very early stage, you would see there's a lot of horrors like this, <laughs> like it's, it's rough and, but that's part of the process and that's part of knowing, you know, sort of dare I say, knowing your craft, I guess we'll see by the end of this, um, you know what you can fix up, you know, um, basically it's, you, you can just do all sorts of surgery and you probably will have seen it with Jeremiah as well. Um, the stuff. I've seen some horrors with Jeremiah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I wouldn't call this work horrible, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely a beginner. It's a strong, strong beginning effort from Jeremiah in general. <laughs> I mean, his best years are definitely ahead of him. So, um, so basically, in this scene, we've got our city, and then let me just go back to my standard camera that I've set up. Uh, we have got. I thought I'd already done this. Okay, we've got a black Aries, a white Aries, a little dude down here. An hydras, a caterpillar. There are some missiles somewhere, but I don't know where they've gone. So let's just hide them. So often, what what can happen, um, you know, this this is the beauty of two D, as far as I'm concerned, is that um, you can see in here that the the lighting is kind of crappy on the ships. Um, it is crappy, um, and but there's really no need to fret at this point because um, you can render off this, you just render off in layers and I've already rendered off the city I rendered that off last night um, because this isn't you, you like with with Keyshot 9 and sort of uh, using the GPU you can get images pretty fast um, but I just kind of want to cut down the sort of accidents that <laughs> could arise today sure. so I've done a little bit of front loading uh, just with setting up of layers and stuff like that. So what time is it? I need to get ramping on, don't I? Um, so I've rendered out the city. Um, I've done that separately. Um, 
and and here you are so that's that's it so we're using a standard 16 by 9 ratio which is uh, your sort of normal normal monitor aspect ratio we could do a sort of cinematic widescreen 2.39 by 1 um we'll see we'll see how the image goes basically um obviously um you, you're, you're cutting out what you're cutting out like a third quarter of the image so that's a quarter less work to do if it all goes wrong um but something like this is is you know your basic your basic render so it's you know it comes out cool you can see i've got the boats in there and stuff um and what I generally like to do is just slightly work on this image and then we'll bring it in as a background to key shot and then relight the ships and then add them in and then add in all the visual effects. So I've already, do you know what, I've never actually done this before. I probably should have done this years ago. I basically made a cheat sheet of um, lasers, thrusters, smoke, uh, sparks, off-screen lens flares, um, excuse me, all sorts of things. Um, and so that'll make it easier. So, Because normally I just hunt around. I know what images I've used them in previously, so I'll just load them up and pull them out. Right. Uh, but, for the, but it makes sense, basically, to be more organized. So, you know, we've basically have worked in some clouds. So this is basically... Uh, it's just a simple cloud image that I've downloaded off textures.com. And then you can basically, that underlying layer, you can then start to remove, sort of create your cloud layer. It's all about the hacks. It's all about the hacks. It's how do you get the image as fast as possible? So as far as, you know, there's, there's lots of issues in here in terms of shading and stuff and because the sun is coming from over here. Um, so I've gone ahead and created a mask and then created my own layer, like a separate layer, and just filled it in with a color. So that could, you know, you can add, you can add any color. Uh, so, you know, we can do whatever we want and just shade. And also, I just put on a, a bevel emboss. I don't know if people do this. I, I, it works well for me because you can, it's kind of, it's almost procedural. So you can kind of, you know, you can increase, hmm. you can increase the dark and stormy vibe quite easily. You don't have to paint it. Um, I th think that's just kind of the way I, that's just, I'm, you know, I'm self taught. Uh, I've always just, pick these things up and I've always used uh, these uh, effects layers and so we'll just you know we'll just oops we'll just blend and these guys out a bit and people will probably laugh at this I still use a mouse for all my work I don't even use a tablet I've yeah. I'm, I'm actually working I'm looking at a tablet now but that I bought a couple of weeks ago in you know, I'm going to start transitioning over, but I'm still way quicker with a mouse. So we're just going to keep keep with that for the minute. I can I can relate when I in my relatively few art related tasks that I have to do, I am st I am still always mouse based. Even yeah. though they, they 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 gave me a Wacom and a pen, and uh, many of our editors use. Uh, tablet and pen uh, even in video editing i still I, I still stick with the mouse it's just yeah it's just, old dogs, it's just new tricks so yeah. let's have a look underlying layers so we'll just start to uh, i'm gonna let's get rid of that i'm gonna leave him off for the minute he's gonna create more problems for me at the moment Okay, so we've got the boats in. We've got a little bit of, a little bit of just sea mist, just to sort of reduce the contrast a little bit, because this is a background element. Um, so we, you know, we don't need to be worrying about it too much. Freebase says that we're noobs. Real concept artists use Hotas. 
I haven't I haven't quite made it to that yet. I'm not quite at that that level. So let's see. We'll just save this guy out. Uh, let's call him B. In fact, let's get rid of that ratio thing. And then, what do we call him B? And then we're just going to flip this one. I, and I, I always lose this guy. Hold on. There we go. For those of you who have joined us uh, about midway through the show, uh, yes, we are here with art director Paul Jones, and he's taking us through the process of creating uh, promo art or key art for concept ships. So how are we doing for time? Uh, we're about halfway through. you got 30 minutes left. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm going to switch this city off. This is the... This is the HDRI scene that's currently underneath us and surrounding us. That's why you can see the floor here, but don't worry about that. Um, so we're going to bring in the back plate. So let's see. That's the original, but um, I think I'm going to, I think I will go for the flipped one because I want the, the ships. I'm, in fact, I'm going to completely kind of reverse what we did for this scribble. I'm going to have it going the other way. So they're all going to be diving in uh, and shooting the poor old Idris. Idris, Idris. I'm never, I'm never quite sure which way it should be pronounced. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not wandering into it. There, there are no winners in the pronunciation wars when it comes to proper nouns. <laughs> Okay, so let's swap that over. Um, and oh, a nice siren in the background there, Jared. Uh, yeah, they, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Run for it, Paul! So let's flip this guy. Let's bring up my cheat sheet. Let's have a look. Yeah, the pronunciation game is when it comes to <laughs> they're talk, uh, when it comes to proper nouns is always a difficult one because ultimately the person whose name it is determines how it's pronounced. Like it's you know there's Idris Ilba, Il you know he pronounces it Idris, uh, but there are other applications of the name where Idris would be right. Uh, I once uh, when I was in the paternity ward uh, for the birth of my first nephew. Uh, there was a woman celebrating the birth, birth of her her daughter, uh, Gonoria. Uh, mm. Gonoria, which uh, she saw on a sign in the in the doctor's office, and thought it sounded pretty. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, 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 that's that's a real I'm, story. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah. So so for that for that person for the rest of their life, uh, it's pronounced Gonoria. So here's a hack because um, because I can't be bothered. Sometimes it's a little it's a little takes a little bit too much effort to move stuff around in Keyshot, especially if you're dealing with uh, large scenes. Uh, it's easy just to scale this guy down to create the visual effect. And because the background is an image and um, not geometry. I can, I can, I can move the camera wildly. Come back. I told you I had a few. I've had a few setup problems. Um, I can move the camera, and the background just stays the same. So let's. Uh, 
Okay. And then let's get where's the white guy? That's him. Let's duplicate him. Thank you, key shot. Don't know why you do that. If anybody knows how to get stop it from doing that, let me know. <laughs> To, and we'll just do that hack again where um, we just scale these guys down because what we'll do is once we've rendered these guys out um, we will just add a little bit of atmospheric depth and it'll just sort of help sort of create that distance effect uh, for MT in chat who asks as is a question, uh, our game dev streams are about exploring the process of game development, and this is part of that process. Say that again, sorry. Thanks for the question. <laughs> was there a question? Yeah. Uh, or was it an observation? It was an observation. It seemed like it was right. Okay. What do we want to do with the caterpillar? Should we just have him? Let's just have him here. Where's our line of action? Actually, oh, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. What's the line of action? Uh, it's basically, um, there's normally a line that goes through your work of, uh, it's kind of like a flow line. So where does your image start and where does it end? So, um, you know, on this one, the uh, the angle of this, um, the ballistic ship is wrong at the moment. He needs to point down, but basically he'll sort of point down towards the idris and the idris then sort of leads us out here. There are many different theories, you know, some people follow the, what's it called, the golden spiral, that sort of sort of comes in and wraps around. Right. It always seems to end up in, what, in, a, in a third, basically, so you're always sort of working with thirds of an image. Sort of, I guess it's basic photography, but it's, yeah. you know, there's always a certain amount of... Um, figuring this stuff out and even once we've rendered it we may sort of we may just change it i'm just going to move him there all right and then that's where's the little guy he's already done an attack run so he's coming back out oh yeah and he's peeling off So let's see. Okay, how we doing for time? Okay. Something like that. Okay, so the lighting's pretty cruddy. So um, I'm going to go for the minutes with just low dreamy. This is like my go to guy. It basically often solves a multitude of sins. You get to see the real value of key shot here. Yep. Let's just let's just raise this up a bit. It's a little bright at the moment. You don't want it sort of flat on like this because it just it just you know you're just not showing the ship in its best lines. So we're kind of matching similar to um to our background there's some you know there's some artistic license going on okay so let's just save that out just in case it crashes i'm not saying it will but everybody knows save often it's 3d right it's computers So you can see that 
this hex skin panel isn't kind of working quite how I want. Um, and I'm just going to have to suck it up. <laughs> I don't have time to fix it. Um, okay. I think that's pretty much it. Are we happy with the yellow? Uh, yeah, folks, f folks called out the yellow right away. Yeah, we're sticking with it. Well, I think they mo mo mostly had questions about why it was yellow. It was from an earlier promo piece. Um, I mean, we can we can just change it. I hope. Why are you not changing? Yeah, okay. We can go with that. Right. Okay, so we're going to do a quick render. Um, so we'll just render this out. PSD, renders with layers. We're just going to set it to... Ooh. Hmm. Actually, we could, really, we could do it a really quick and nasty way. What are you thinking? So this is the quick and nasty way. Hold on. Oh, nah, let's just do the render. I don't like the quick and nasty way. <laughs> we'll just set it to three minutes. So what are you setting here? Basically, I'm just saying, give me a render. Basically, I give it a time limit. I say, you've got three minutes to do your best. <laughs> <laughs> and the software, the software alters the settings, basically render out an image for me. It just it then renders it out with all the passes, so the specular pass, the diffuse, the ambient occlusion, the clown pass. So these are all sort of things that sort of can help with uh, sort of fix-ups a little bit later on. So are you ready to fill in for three minutes, Jared? Sure. Let me just double check this. And there probably is a better way. I haven't actually used Key, Keyshot 9 much with the GPU side of things. Um, but we'll see what happens. And it should bring up another window. I guess. Inherit from real time view. Okay. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. So, how am I doing, Jared? <laughs> you doing good? <laughs> You're doing good. Um, so, yeah, so for those of, you, those of you who have joined us midway, uh, obviously uh, one of the principal ways that Star Citizen is funded is through the creation of concept ships. And one of the, one of the principal ways we communicate uh, the, uh, the, the capabilities and the style and the essence, the personality of each ship is through the creation of promo art. Uh, which uh, Paul Jones and his team oversees. So we are exploring the process of creating uh, promo art today on Star Citizen Live Game Dev. Uh, since it is a crucial aspect to the existence of Star Citizen. Um, you see here in key shot, uh, rendering out, what is this, a 4K image? 3840 by 2160? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks like, it's, looks like it's roughly a 4K image that, you, that you're... Uh, Rendering out now. This is, this is not a finished image, but this is uh, this is an intermediate render that you'll then be going forward with, you're painting over and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So basically, we'll we'll take this and say what should happen uh, is they oh, will have rendered out the ships. We'll bring it in uh, as a separate layer, um, and then we'll start adding on. Basically, <coughs> excuse me adding on all these effects. So 
you know, you've got if there's all sorts of things here. It's a real sort of it's a real sort of kit um, that I've used over the past. So muzzle flashes, sparks for hits, details for ships. Uh, we won't need that today. Uh, lens flares, um, and you'll see it. It'll you know the funny thing is with this stuff is that um, in the past I've, I've it's not a mistake. In the past I've done it where uh, you know I've taken a concept artist's image and said make it like this and i will have put in all the effects and put in done the color grading and everything and so it gets you to that 80 85 percent mark really fast but it really pisses them off because they're just like we've done it <laughs> like there's no like it's like it's like you've given them an unwrapped present um and then there's like well i can see what it is now like there's no it's like what, what's the benefit like so i try and so that's why i try and sort of stick to uh, crappy stuff like this so so it, it, seriously um so that they have then they still have that surprise and that sort of magic of because you know they've been working on this stuff for what three i mean s some of the stuff is six months we've spent on some of the large ships mm -hmm. um and you know i think two months is probably the fastest we've done something so even that is two months of solid graft eight hours a day looking at the same thing solving problems solving mechanics solving visual problems so you know it's you know it's like they're the, the baker and then suddenly you go well here's your cake it's done i've decorated it and so um yeah you want to give them that you want to give them that payoff where they're just like okay yep yeah, this this is looking cool. I like yeah. You know they they get to do all that sort of fundamental groundwork. Yeah. Uh, Zimler asks, why not use the game engine for concept images? Uh, because as concept ships, they have not been implemented into game yet. They have not been built and modeled out in game. Yeah, it's you know often these even this even the little. I mean, it depends on the artist as well. Some artists are super clean. There's no right or wrong. Just everybody works differently. Somebody might build the same ship, and it'll be one million polygons or tries. Right. Another artist might build it, and it'll be two hundred thousand. Um, but you know, the the ship team, you know, they're spending time on creating something that works for the engine. All the bevels are correct, and the shaders are correct, and parallax occlusion maps and yep. lighting, and there are so many technical issues. Um, I'm remembering the the rivets on the f second generation Freelancer. Remember the, uh, uh, yes. uh, the, the, the the rivets in a concept art. You don't in concept art you don't have to worry about efficiency. You just have to worry about it looking good. Uh, but uh, the the second version of the Freelance, maybe it was the third. I, I don't remember. But it had all the rivets along the the, the lines, and each rivet was so, was like tens of thousands of tries. <laughs> <laughs> because it was just created really dirty really fast yeah. and uh and uh, unfortunately when it came time to implement it in game they took the rivet from the concept model and just said oh good i don't have to make a rivet and uh at one point the freelancer had a greater because of that concept rivet that was in the actual hangar model uh the the freelancer had a greater resource footprint than the entire address oh yeah it because was because of the, all the duplicated rivets it was crazy. So it's it's a vastly different workflow creating concept ships versus in-game ships. And there's a reason they're separated. All right, let's see if I can do this. It's it's totally different when you're under pressure. <laughs> uh, no pressure. Ten minutes left. I know, right. I can do this. Okay, so flipped. Right. Let's just find that render. <laughs> uh, is there any? I've got people <laughs> coming into my house. <laughs> uh, Susan Lou asks, "Are there any concept art that you that you released that you wish you could redo?" Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, what's my favorite? My favorite phrase in, is in uh, creative endeavors: "Is art is never finished, only abandoned." Yes. So I mean, sometimes, yeah, it's just like you you run out of time. You're just like, oh god, that that sucked. That image, 
you know, it just didn't, it, it didn't quite pull off uh, what I wanted it, what did it, what I wanted it to do. Um, thankfully, there's a few and far between because I, I, I'm really not one for failure. <laughs> I don't deal well with it. Uh, okay, so are you still seeing this? Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Where are my clouds? They go. Okay. I just duplicate. So let's not worry about him at the moment. Just... That's another good phrase, uh, Davidian. Uh, you never fail. You just successfully find ways that don't work. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So I'm just laying down some a little bit of depth. Things are starting to disappear a little bit, but we'll bring that back. Okay, so so mm -hmm. my file is going to get pretty messy now because I'm not going to spend time on um, keeping it all clean. He needs to drop below. Oh, that'll do. Then let's see, let's get some engines on him. So you can see it's starting to, the image is starting to get some punch. This one. Okay. Then what's he? He the white one's a laser, isn't he? Yeah. Where's his laser going? So I like to keep everything as uh, what I call a smart layer. <clears throat> and basically, uh, basically, Photoshop remembers if I if I do any tweaking, it remembers its original orientation. Mm. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for editing further down the line. So let's have that. I guess we need some we need some projectiles. What is my projectile? That one. Uh, I would agree with that, uh, Jay Calvin. Concept arts are representations. They're they're meant to be evocative of ideas and, for lack of a better word, concepts. Uh, they're not meant as literal transition uh, translations of this is what the game will look like or whatever with regards to like the city that you're seeing in the background and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Basically, we I call it selling the dream. Yeah. You know, we are we're basically trying to give give people an idea. Yeah. Uh, if you've ever bought if you ever bought one of those. Art of Star Wars books, or th th those are some of the best examples. You'll see exactly. You know, concept art is to is to share an idea. It's 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 not a it's not a literal representation of what you're going to see on screen at any given time. Because at that point, then you have the 
dozens of artisans that come in afterwards, sometimes hundreds of people who are involved in, in building the thing that you've now repre that you've represented in your concept art, and they have their own agency. You know, it's it's nobody who goes and builds these things just wants to paint by numbers and oh, okay, I'm I'm just doing what this other person has created. You know, every, you know all these other artists who are involved in the process of bringing this thing to life uh, in either a movie world or in our case a game world uh, they have all of their own agency and all of their own technique and technologies and stuff and uh, hopefully through the changes things get better that's the idea well put okay so it's going to find some sparks those are the wrong sparks I'm just on a I've got a this VFX image on a different on a different screen. How are we doing for time? I got about four minutes. Ooh, okay. Right, we need to try it. And this is Jared. I will get this done. Oh, I don't think we've ever finished anything on an SEL. It's uh, very little in game development can be done in a single hour. This is, again, it's more about just exploring the process and showing some of the considerations that go into the work being done here. Okay, so I seem to have stopped talking, but let's just save that. Don't want it to crash at this stage. Then, uh, then let's see what we've got left. Normally, there would be a lot more, you know, balancing all sorts of things. Right. Tweaking the yeah. precise dir direction of the muzzle flash and everything, so that all it... sorts of things. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy what goes on. I'm just going to boost, boost these guys a bit, and then let's have a look. I've just got one party trick left. Two actually. Are we going to? Do we get cut off on the minute? No. It's like a little black bar. Right, so those are our bars. So we're just going to duplicate that. Then we're going to use, Ian Leyland calls these my job security filters. Cheeky. Um, and so basically this is just a, is a plugin that I use for Photoshop called Exposure. You can pretty much do most of it in... Um, Photoshop anyway, uh, but this basically remembers all your presets, so you can basically sort of make it almost one touch. Right. But you can uh, basically add that sort of nice glow. You add a little bit of grain, so we'll just add a little regular grain. We'll drop that down to normally 12. That works. Then we'll, we don't want focus. Got one thing left, and then here we go. I've started to get more into sort of making uh, slice of life stuff. So you know, it's not just it's not just about showing showing the art. It's you know, it's about trying to get a sort of movie a movie quality, like a movie vibe to your image. Yeah. Uh, the uh, we often refer to it as the the in situ. It where it's it's trying to present something as close to something that will stir the imagination as possible. Yep, yep. Let's just widen that out a little bit. So, and then do we need to let's have a look at vignettes? A little bit of a vignette. Boom. 
And then we'll just copy that, just waiting for it to do its thing. Copy. Paste, black bars, boom, done. That's it. Not bad for an hour's work. Well, Not too bad, huh? Work, I mean, yeah. I missed off the trails of some <laughs> of the ships. That would have helped. Uh, just with sort of, you would have basically got sort of that directionality. You want, you want to put the trails in? Too late now, probably. Okay. Where's my pen gone? Oh, there we go. So it would be, you know, we'd have, you'd have him come in. We'd have him. Actually, he, he. Uh, we could have had him do that. That might be quite nice. So it would have, you know, basically what you would have had then in terms of your line of action, it would have just, it would have been this. So everything's converging. If only I could draw. Uh, Starburger Lord, uh, to answer your question, because this isn't a stream about what's coming in 3.9. It's a stream about process and how we work. And that's it, dude. That's as far as I can take it without going on for another hour. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, will, you, will you say that so I can give it to our uh, social media guy? So you can use it as the thumbnail for the video. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Um, I stop sharing? Can you stop sharing? Well, I shall just save this. Paul, thank you so much for for for, ta for taking the time. I, I know it was just a, a an, an hour here today, but I know you put a lot of work in through the course of the week to get prepped up in these things. It's uh, it's always appreciated. I know um, it's one of those things that I d I don't think is always seen. Is that you know the if it's the Ten or fifteen minutes that appears in an ISC, or the hour that appears here. There's actually hours and hours and hours of prep work that go into these things beforehand. Uh, so I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this, especially in our new uh, work from home reality as it is. No, oh, you're welcome. I'll, I will know for next time when I volunteer that this, it's about two days' work prep. <laughs> it's worth it though. It was good to see. Yeah, yeah. All it right. can be done. Yep. Uh, so for that, uh, that's it. That's this episode of Star Citizen Live Game Dev. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week with another episode of Star Citizen Live. Uh, we are still making Calling All Devs. It's just through scheduling things and through work from home and getting people online and stuff like that. Uh, there won't be a Calling All Devs next week. They'll be at, we'll be back with another Star Citizen Live. Uh, and then we'll have another Calling All Devs when that gets back up and running. So for Paul Jones... For me and for everybody at CIG, again, everybody, remember, uh, stay safe out there. Um, be kind to your fellow humans. Uh, 3.9 is still underway. Uh, I know folks are anxiously waiting for it to, to come to a wider PTU. Um, I don't have any information for that. Uh, I literally I woke up and went to this show, so I haven't checked in with anybody today, so I don't have any news for you. But I know that folks are, are working on it diligently, and we want it out as bad as you do. I promise. So... For Paul, I'm Jared. This is Star Season Live. We'll see you next week, everybody. Take care.